Hey there YouTube, this is Adam and I've got another uh, another purchase that I'm going to test out and just really try and, I think it's just a cleanup that this needs. But uh, let's take a look. So I purchased this, um, it didn't actually come from eBay, it came from Kijiji which is the equivalent kind of of Craigslist here in Canada. So for $80 I picked up a Nintendo 64 with some games. So it was listed as working but some of the games didn't work and to me 90% of the time that means that they're just dirty they can't be read um, but this is the console that I got so it comes with looks like OEM cables which is good um, at the very least I mean Nintendo branded AV cable that's a $15 $20 item Nintendo branded C adapter Again, that's a twenty to thirty dollar item, so we're making our money back quickly here. So let's take a quick peek overall at this console first. So it's just your standard gray Nintendo 64. Looks like the switches work. Physically, it's in reasonable condition. There's not a lot of uh, grime, dirt. Hey, it comes with a uh, expansion pack. So that's nice. Um, these guys, I mean, typically run about 30 bucks if I were to buy one, go on eBay or something, and that's just for a third-party one. This appears to be an OEM Nintendo-branded one. Yep. So that's good. Uh, looks like there's a chip in there or something. Let's get that out. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Leaf? Something. But, I mean, otherwise, it appears to be clean. Cartridge slot. It's shiny. Looks pretty clean. I mean, a little bit of dust, but nothing really to worry about. So, I mean, I think this system's probably fine. We'll test that in a little bit. Uh, this door is kind of... Doesn't really snap into place very well. But, oh well. So put that aside, um, what I'm more excited about is the stuff that came with it. So, first we've got the translucent purple controller. The joystick is still kind of stiff, so that's good. It reverts back to its original spot, it's not really loose. It's, uh, it's very common that these over time just start getting loose and floppy, and they need to be replaced. Also comes with a memory card. So again, OEM Nintendo branded controller pack, so that's another good find. Um, controller looks to be in good, clean shape. Um, the logos are all clean, so I mean, I might not even need to take this apart to clean it. So I, I'm very happy about that. <clears throat> Next, we have the yellow controller, and this is what I was talking about with the floppy joysticks. You see how loose that is? So that's going to probably require a new joystick. Um, they're not very difficult to change. I just have to order some online. So they probably cost about four or five bucks to buy on eBay. You can get different quality of ones. You can get ones that actually um, kind of mimic the GameCube controller or joystick. So I might check that out, give that a try. But uh, put that off to the side. This one definitely will need a clean as it's got dust, grime, pop of some type, who knows. <clears throat> and then we have classic gray. So again, joystick's in pretty good shape. I might actually just swap this joystick with the yellow one. Um, just because you see gray controllers everywhere, nice to have a little color in your life, I think. And then, um, lastly, the stuff that comes with it. So got a couple of games here. Um, this yellow game, I mean, I know what it is, but it's either Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 or Donkey Kong. Um, now, the person told me they were not able to get Donkey Kong working, and I mean, those pins don't look horrible, but I think it definitely could use a clean. So we're going to open that up today, clean it out, and try and get that operating. Mario Kart 64. Um, she told me that Mario Kart works great, so that's good. 
Uh, unfortunately, label started to peel off. I'm guessing someone put a price tag or something on there. Um, I hate it when stores do that. Um, people that just should know better do it anyways. And same with Donkey Kong. It's got that price tag right in the corner here. Hopefully I can use a little bit of hot air and lift that up. Let's see how this... Yeah, the sticker's starting to rip anyways. So I'm going to hit that with the uh, hot air and see if I can get that up. Toy Story 2. Um, I mean, whatever. And GoldenEye. So three excellent games included with that. T three controllers, two of which are not your standard gray controller and a system with cables and the expansion pack. So um, all there's left to do here is hook it up, turn it on, and let's see what works. All right, so I've got this all set up. Um, I've hooked up all the controllers just to make sure that these controller ports all work. And let's try a game. So she told me that Mario Kart works fine. So we'll try that first just to make sure. And that worked first time. So we'll go three player game. So player one works. Player two works. And where's my three? So the joystick, this is the one with the floppy joystick. It definitely needs a lot more deliberate action. So takes a bit more to move it, but um, we're going to replace that joystick. But so far so good. So controller ports work, system works. I mean, we're not going to have much of a video here, but I am going to show you how to take it apart and really give it a thorough cleaning as it's just kind of dirty. Um, let's check out Donkey Kong. Um, supposedly that one wasn't working properly. All right, so we have Donkey Kong in here. Let's uh, power on. Okay. Doesn't look to be much of an issue. Um, unless it wasn't getting the uh, expansion pack, but it looks like we're good to go. So, I mean, this seems to be working perfectly fine. Start. Yeah, we're good. So Donkey Kong works. Um, let's try Goldeneye. So we've got Goldeneye in here. Turn it on. Seems fine to me. I don't know. I don't know what she was doing where she told me that Donkey Kong and Goldeneye didn't work, but they don't really require any work. They seem to be just fine. Yep, multiplayer automatically detects three. I mean, this is perfect. Um, so yeah, doesn't look like there's much of a video here as far as how to fix this, with the exception of this yellow joystick here. So I think that's what we're gonna dive right into. So I'm gonna clear all this out. We're gonna crack this open and swap it out with the gray joystick. Um, just because I'd rather have a yellow controller than a gray one. So I'll be back once we're ready to do that. Okay, so we're ready to open up this controller and replace the joystick on it. So as I mentioned before, this joystick is kind of floppy. You wiggle it around and it moves. Um, when you bring it over, it doesn't really snap back well into place. So we're gonna replace it with the one that came in my gray controller. And I'm just gonna order a new one for the gray controller. Only reason for that is I'd much rather have a yellow one than a gray one. Everyone has a gray controller. Um, different little bit of color is not a bad thing. So let's get this going. To open it up, you need two tools. You need a small Phillips screwdriver with the crosshead, and then you need a smaller Phillips screwdriver with the uh, with the crosshead here. So if you haven't already, go and pick yourself up a package of precision screwdriver bits. I bought this from the source or future, or not future shop, uh, <clears throat> the source, which is Radio Shack in the States. And 
I mean, something like this cost me, I think, $15. It has a ton of different bits. Um, they're not security bits for opening up consoles, but they're just small screwdrivers. It's not particularly high quality, but it does the trick for me. So if you don't have anything, go grab yourself something like that. It'll save yourself a lot of time. So to open this up, we have what looks like seven screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then there's two in this expansion slot. And for those two, you need to use your precision screwdriver as they're a bit smaller. Um, these two in here are a pain to get back in. So I'm going to try and show you a couple tips to get them back into place afterwards. So I'm going to unscrew those. I'm not going to record it and I'll be back once that's done. Okay. So I have all nine screws removed and what I like to do is keep them in this magnetic dish. So that way they're easy to keep track of. They don't go bouncing around. If you knock something over, you can flip it upside down and everything stays in place with the exception of that one, of course. Um, so yeah, pick yourself up one of these. They are very handy to have. Alternatively, you can use a cup, you can use something, just keep them somewhere where they're not gonna roll all over. So once they're removed, all you do to open this up is just lift the bottom off and all the components hang into the top of it with the exception of the Z button. So this one, if you're taking the button off to wash, which we're gonna do, um, you can see how it's attached in here. There's these little clips and you wanna be careful not to accidentally break them or anything like that. So just grab it, slide it up gently towards the back of it and it lifts right out. So we're gonna put that aside. I'm gonna wash this whole shell as it is kinda of dirty. So um, to do that, you just use hot water, dish soap, and let it soak for a bit. Then hit it with a uh, dishcloth, really give it a good scrub. For areas like logos where you have indents or around corners, around the edges here, especially where the two halves meet, a lot of grime likes to build up. I like to grab a toothbrush and give it a good scrub along there to really get in there and get everything out. So this is the inside of the controller. Um, this is the circuit board here. This is the little button pad that controls the Z button. Um, all these pads, they just lift right out and can be put aside. This is the little board that controls the Z button and it just has a connector here. So you can disconnect this actually by give, just giving it a pull, lift it out and then, oh, that's the, uh, I'm sorry, that's a joystick connector. The board just lifts right off just like that and it's connected, it's hardwired in, so you can't actually remove that without desoldering. Um, these pads here control the left and right bumpers. So again, they just lift right off. You can put those aside. And there's three screws here. One, two, and three. These three screws are gonna have to be removed in order to get the joystick out. So unscrew those set them aside. They are usually a different color from the rest of it. So you can mix them in with the rest of your screws as long as you make a note that the silver colored screws are the ones that hold the joystick into place. They're different size, they're different colors, so I mean they should stand out as unique and then not get uh, confused with others. So that's our joystick. So this is the floppy one and we're just going to set this aside. <clears throat> From here, you can lift out the rest of the board. So if you notice up at the top here, you see how the cord kind of winds around these posts. And the point of that is so that if you tug at this, you're not ripping the cord right off the board. So it's there for a reason. Um, when you reassemble it, make sure that you're wrapping it around that way again. So that way it has that safety feature still there. So this is the board. Overall, it looks pretty clean. Sometimes, you might get some buildup around these pads here as these are what makes the buttons work. The, what happens is there's these little black capacitive pads or conductive pads, sorry. And when you touch them down on here, it bridges the gap between the right and the left of it and it completes a circuit. That circuit is processed and it gets sent back to the console and does whatever the game tells it that button's supposed to do. So. <clears throat> Sometimes I like to grab a Q-tip, dip it in some 99% isopropyl alcohol. So that would be this stuff. You can get it from a drugstore. It's only a few dollars. 
Um, dip it in that and just give them a wipe if they're dirty. This is actually really clean, so I'm going to give it a wipe, but there's probably not really a need for it. Um, flip it over, same thing for the Z, the R, and the L buttons. So those are the, the four different locations where you're going to find buttons. The other thing is going to be this connector. So this connector is soldered right onto the board. You can't take it off, but what I like to do sometimes is just take a pin. Let me grab one here. They're uh, kind of difficult to pick up. There you go. <clears throat> so I like to grab a pin and just run it along the bottom here. And the point of this is to grab any thing that's kind of stuck in the bottom of this cartridge slot and try and lift it out. So this is actually pretty clean. There's nothing in here really to worry about. The pins are in good shape, so um, I'm not going to worry about this right now. So I'm going to set the board aside as I don't really have a lot to do with that. And this is the top shell. So once you lift these pads out, they can be washed as well. Um, they seem to be in reasonably good shape, but on the flip side, you're going to get some dust and grime and stuff building up there, as you can maybe see, yeah. And then the buttons, they just lift right out of the board here, or the casing. So we're going to take this whole thing, we're going to soak it in hot water and soap, let it sit for probably about 15 minutes. When it loosens up, we're going to come back, um, swap out the controller with the one from the gray controller, and or the joystick from the gray controller, and reassemble it. So once that's done, I'll be back and I'll show you what we're going to do next. All right, so I've got uh, the parts in the sink just soaking right now. So while I wait, um, I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity and clean the cord. So what I do for that is I get a paper towel and dump dunk some alcohol on it and simply just grab the cord and wipe it down just like that. So you're going to wipe it all the way down to the bottom, try and get years of gunk and grime off it. So this was someone else's, who knows what they've done with it, how dirty they were, what their house was like, I have no idea. The controllers themselves weren't in too bad of shape, so I mean, it looks like they took care of their stuff, but let's get years of grime off anyways. And another thing while I've thought of it, see that's what's come off. When you go to reassemble it, you might notice I have both boards here, one's for the gray controller and one's for the yellow one. Um, make sure you put the right board back in. Reason being is they have different colored connectors on the end, and if you reassemble it, not looking at the end of the connector, and discover at the end that, oh, my gray controller now has a yellow tip, you're going to be a little bit unhappy and probably have to rip everything apart. So save yourself that extra step. Just do it right the first time. Um, what I'm also going to do is grab my toothbrush and give this tip a bit of a scrub. You see the Nintendo's a little bit dirty. Um, just kind of get in there, try and get all this stuff out of there. Um, all I'm using is some alcohol and my toothbrush. Give it a good scrub, try and clean it up as best as I can here. You're not going to really get everything out because this is probably the dirtiest part of the whole cable. It's where everyone grabs to plug it in, to pull it out. So you get lots of grease and grime and all sorts of gross stuff in there. But I'm just trying to make it look as nice as I can. That's coming not too bad. So I'm going to do the same thing with the gray one. And I have one more thing to show you once I'm done this. So I'll be back once this is... So I've discovered one final problem. And this was with the gray controller. So this is the left bumper button. And you see how it sits in place is there's two posts. One there and one there. And it sits into the controller and pivots around there and then you just tap the left bumper and it activates the pad. Problem is, there was a rattle inside that controller and this is why. So one of those posts had actually broken off. Um, 
So it's not a huge deal and it is an easy fix. So what you need in order to fix something like this is a little bit of crazy glue, super glue, whatever you call it. And I mean, I have a little collection of these, probably five of them, and they cost a few dollars from the dollar store. So put a little dab here. You don't need much. That might be too much. And then simply just hold the piece in place where it needs to go. Hold it for probably only about 10 seconds is all you need. Just trying to make sure that it's straight. There we go. So we'll wait, let's wait 15 seconds just to make sure it takes hold. And once it's done, we're gonna leave it and let it dry. So I'm not gonna wash this. I'm not gonna put it in place right away. I'm just gonna let it sit probably for an hour just to make sure that that glue fully cures and is about as solid as it was when it first came off the assembly line. Um, the way super glue works is it actually melts, it chem crap, it chemically melts the plastic a little bit and forces it to bond together. So it's not like white glue where it's just sticky and holds itself together. It will actually become a very strong bond. So um, I may have put too much on causing it not to do that. And I've moved it and caused it not to stay. So we may have to try this again. Ideally, um, you would use tweezers for something like this, but I didn't, and I'm now regretting it. So I'm going to hold that for a little bit. I'm not going to make you watch me hold it in place, and once it's solidified, I will be back. All right, so these are washed. Um, they're nice and dry, and everything's ready to be reassembled here. So. What we've got here is all the parts for one controller. So there's a lot of different buttons and pads. Um, we have the board, we have the outer shell, um, we have the two joysticks, and the one that we're gonna be putting in this one is the one that's a bit stiffer. So that would be the bottom one here. You might notice that the joysticks are slightly different, and <clears throat> one's black, one's gray. What does that mean to you? Really nothing. Um, they were just manufactured at different times, so they probably use different color plastics. Um, these are both, as far as I can tell, original Nintendo joysticks, so I don't think this has been replaced, or the gray one's been replaced before. Just, they were made at different times, so they, um, like this one, for example, has the number 1 on it, and this one has the number 8. I'm not sure if that refers to batches, um, maybe, I don't know, maybe this one was made in 1998 and this one was made in 2001. I, I really don't know what the deal with that is, but um, all I know is one of them works a bit better and we're going to use it. So let's, uh, let's begin. So what you do is you start with flipping the shell over and then put the buttons in. So. The buttons only go in one way. You can't put the wrong button in the wrong spot. It simply won't fit. So for example, if I try and force the B button in the A spot, it's not gonna go in properly. There's these little tabs on the bottom of the button and that aligns with these cutouts that are in the holes. So the B button sits perfectly in the spot for the B. The A button does the same thing for the A. And at the same time, that means that they're always facing the proper direction. I can't mix up A and put it in backwards or sideways or anything like that. Um, these C buttons, again, they have to go in their specific spot as the buttons themselves are different sizes, just due to the contour of the controller. So you find where the button's supposed to go, line it up, and just put it into place. Um, there we go. There's a little water in that one still, but that'll be fine. And there. So now we need the start button. 
and the D-pad. And the D-pad, once again, has a little cutout, so you can only put it in one way. I mean, it shouldn't make too much of a difference, whether it goes inside out, upside down, sideways, backwards, but they want it going in that way, so we will appease Nintendo. Now, time to put in the actual joystick. Actually, we'll do that after the board goes in. So next step is going to be... Oh, crap. Get some stuff on these pads. So the next step will be putting on the pads. And they're designed to go in, again, one specific way. You see the pads match the buttons, and they just go right on top here. There's a couple little holes in the middle, and there's a couple little posts right here. Those posts are designed to go right through the holes to hold this in place. So that way when you go to assemble the controller and or over time, they don't slip and you don't lose um, functionality of certain buttons. So the one with the six goes right here where the C buttons A and B is. Start goes above the start button and that's the small individual one. As far as I can tell, there's no proper up or down. So just make sure that you have it the proper way with the black facing up when you're looking at it. Um, the D-pad, again, it doesn't have any discernible proper way to go, so just make sure that it fits over this post, goes here, and is sitting properly in place there. Um, now, what you will do is put the left and right buttons in. So, since we're looking at the controller upside down, the left button is going to go in the right spot, and the right button is going to go in the left spot. Makes sense. Um, the Z button, this part actually goes on the bottom half of the controller. So once again, you put one side in, and then slide the second half into place, and it just sits right in place like that. So we'll leave that for now. Um, what we'll have remaining is the left and right pads, and they are different colored for a reason. Um, as they're designed to go only in one specific way. So one's for the left and one's for the right. And then we have the Z pad. <clears throat> so let's get the board ready for installation. So the board has these holes cut out in it. And those holes, again, are going to line up just like that. So the posts go through the holes. And you have these two little, let's call them subboards, with the left and right pad in it and we need to add the pads. So the way that these go in, you notice there's a hump on the top and there's a hump on the top of the board and two solder points here on one corner, they're not on the other. The solder points are designed to fit in this little hole. So that means this one is for the left pad, which is right the way we're looking at it. If you try and put the improper one in, the holes won't line up and it's gonna not sit properly. So we'll put that in place. There is a couple little, there's also these little rubber posts and they're designed to sit in the holes here. So that way it sits properly and it never slips out of place while you're using it. So there we go. And then, so this, once it's in place, we'll sit right like that. So once you have it, just give it a little push, make sure that it feels like it almost clicks a bit, and then you're good. Put the button back in place and that's ready to go. Now, same thing for the other side. I'm gonna put the orange pad on here, lining up those posts, the solder points, and then it just sits just like that. <clears throat> Now we put the right button into place where it belongs, and we're almost ready to go. So next step is going to be the joystick. So make sure you grab the correct joystick. So this is the newer one with the good, uh, good action on it. So you put it in place, and we're going to grab three of those silver screws that we took out earlier. So they're the small ones. They're the only silver ones out of the bunch, and they just go in place right here. This has to be screwed in before you put the shell back on 
Otherwise, you're not going to be able to access these screws. Um, in this case, it's definitely helpful to have a magnetic screwdriver, um, as these screws are small, and if you have bigger fingers, they don't. It's difficult to get them into place, as it is kind of tight. And again, since this is plastic, just be careful that you're not stripping the plastic. You don't have to screw these in super tight. Just make sure that they're in firmly. Um, once you start getting resistance, just stop so that you don't strip the plastic and make it difficult in the future. Um, before you go any further, make sure that you connect it. Um, I'm imagining there are people out there that have installed new joysticks and forgot to connect it to the board. And if you do that, your joystick isn't going to work, so don't do that. <clears throat> Last step here is going to be this pad for the Z button. So just like the shoulder buttons, the pad sits on the little board here. I put it in the wrong way. So it has this little cutout for the solder joints here. So again, sits in place. It should match the contour of the board pretty well and then it just simply snaps into place, just like that. Make sure that it's sitting flat. You don't want it bunching up or anything like that, otherwise the Z button won't feel proper. Um, before we go any further, I'm also gonna make sure that the controller's cable is wrapped around properly. So, as we remember before, it has to wrap around these posts but you need it to make sure that it stays clear of these screw connections right here. So there's these two little posts right here that the controller rests in. It loops around the connectors, loops around these posts here, and then it goes out the top. So make sure when you're reassembling it looks pretty similar to that. Um, give this a little push just in case it's lost a connection or anything. And by this point your shoulder buttons have probably fallen off, so set them into place once again, and we are ready to install the bottom half. So that all looks good. Now we'll just grab the other half of the shell, and you have to put it, just line it up nicely with the top. It has to be flat, otherwise you may run into the case where buttons are, especially those shoulder buttons, are not sitting properly. So there we are. It's all flushly in place and time to screw it all together. So I'm going to put in these seven screws and I'm going to show you how I tackle these ones as they are kind of difficult to get to as it's just such a tight area. So I'll be back once the seven are installed. Okay so I have it mostly reassembled. Um, we still have those two screws to put in but before we do that um, what you want to do is give all the buttons a try. Make sure that you get good feel on these buttons when you push them. If you don't, if it feels like it's not pushing in all the way, especially this Z button, this one is uh, prone to sometimes having that pad slip. So make sure that they feel right. If they don't feel right, open it up again, reposition those pads and close it up. Um, you may have to screw in these before you test it as if it's not together properly, it might feel a little mushy. So I'm satisfied with that, so we're going to move on to getting those screws into that expansion port. So it is there are a couple ways to go about doing it. Um, if you have tweezers, that's the easiest way, is you may be able to hold them in place here and then screw it down. What I like to do is, using a magnetic screwdriver, and that's what this is, I kind of hold it vertically like this, and then lower the controller in place, and that way I can get it into the hole. Um, I'm never going to be able to get my fingers in there to hold the screw into place. And if I try to lower the screw in, sometimes you may wind up just dropping the screw. So, I mean, if you have a strong enough magnetic screwdriver, you can do that. But if it's not strong enough, it looks like I got it in. If it's not strong enough, you're going to have a hard time with that. And you may lose the screw if it falls and bounces on the floor. So again, you don't want to strip these. Just give it nice finger tight pressure. 
and that's it. So this controller has been cleaned. It's uh, I'm going to give it a test, but it should be fully functional and it's uh, ready to go. So uh, thanks a lot for watching this segment of the video. In the next video, I'm going to tackle opening up the Nintendo itself, showing you how to clean it, which screws go where, and I may look into perhaps doing a couple modifications on it. Uh, we'll see how I'm feeling, but uh, again, thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Bye.